All right, welcome. So I've made three separate videos for these generators. This particular video is about this one, the Generac XT8500 EFI. All right, this is the Generac XT8500 EFI. First things first, taking out my key, battery's disconnected, spark plug wire is already off. Recommended to do that uh, prior to starting your maintenance per the manual. And here we go. I'm just gonna go through some of the end of season maintenance stuff I do, as well as some of the winterizing stuff that I do. Uh, for winterizing, typically, I, you know, other than this maintenance, so it's ready for the next season, just ready to go. Whenever I'm filling up a gas can for any of my small engine equipment, I almost always, I don't wanna say always, but the majority of the time, especially towards the end of the season, I will put stabilizer in it. That way, if for some reason I can't get to it, you know, I get incapacitated or something, and, and I, I prefer to run them dry, but if I can't, time just doesn't allow, logistics, whatever, I know it's still good, and it hasn't failed me. I'm not saying that it's foolproof, but so far it's been good to me to put a little stabilizer in the gas as, you know, per the can's instructions. And if I don't run it dry, it fires right up the next year. So in this video, other than talking about that, I think covered that enough, I'm gonna change the oil, clean the oil crankcase oil filter, check the spark arrestor and clean if necessary, and check the air filter and clean if necessary, and change the plug. And I have a torch small engine plug here. It's an F7RTC, which is what is in there currently. It's what came from the factory. And that's a, a 13 16 regular plug socket feeler gauge uh, i have trouble finding the proper spark plug gap sizes for some of the other generators at the time that i did them but for this one i was able to find it in the manual and it says from 0.028 to 0.031 so i've gapped it to so i could get 028 in there and can't get 0331 in there so it's it's pretty good um, I've already pre-gapped that, so if you don't see me do that, we've covered that. So first thing we'll do here is change the oil. All right, so I know there's different models of these, and some may or may not have this oil filter in it. And the manual was, you know, other than a, a number and an arrow pointing in the general area, there was no additional description. I've looked online at the manual, etc., and the best I can tell looking at this is, you know, this is your oil fill cap, and this should be the the uh, crankcase oil filter and we're gonna find out together because I have not removed it on this model before so we'll see so we'll drain the oil first and I'll tell you what tools I'm using it doesn't necessarily mean that's what you're gonna need or use my oil plug right here to wipe everything off a little bit first that is a 12 millimeter doesn't mean yours is you know that works I get a little I'm going to get an extension on there just so I can get a little, this kind of, I don't have any swing room. There we go. There we go, just kind of crack it. I've never had, I've, this is my first change on here, so. I don't anticipate that to come out of there very rapidly, but you never know. And I did run it a little bit before this. A little warm. I'm just taking this out slowly because I don't know. Yeah, that comes out pretty unaggressively. So let that drain. And while that's draining, I'm going to check out that crankcase deal there. I might need a might need uh, pliers or something on that. It seems like it's got it's on there pretty good. Oh, no, we got it. So we'll see what happens when we open this up. Like I said, the manual was just lacking. It had really good details on some things and then on others, yep, there we go. So it's just a screen filter. And I'm gonna loosen this up a little as well. Helps things drain better, quicker, more completely. Letting air into the system to let it drain out faster. So it says to clean that with parts cleaner and let air dry or blow out with a compressor. And of course, when you're blowing out any type of filter, you know, you gotta know which way the oil is traveling. Is it going around and in, or is it going through the center and out? Because you wanna blow in the same direction that the, you know, the fluid being filtered out is, is going in, so. 
And as long as you get it good and clean, I guess it doesn't matter, but that's just kind of how, how my brain works on that one. So I'm not lodging things in deeper in the direction that it was supposed to be stopped, if that makes sense. So we'll let that drain out. While that's draining, I'm gonna come around and check the spark arrestor. We got your spark arrestor on the muffler there, that's right here. And there's just a clamp on there. And then you gotta kind of work it out with the pliers. They're typically in there pretty good with all the, you know, expansion and contraction from the heat and, but I've already loosened this up a little bit. We'll get a little bit more. Usually just the clamp comes off and then you gotta kind of work this back and forth. You know, and depending on how old yours is and how much buildup there is on it, take a little more or less effort. So that's the spark arrestor. It's a screen, basically. And you bang it a little bit and this looks pretty dang clean so but you can also blow it out with compressed air and but it's this one's pretty clean I don't know why you can see that but you can see through it quite well so we'll just pop that back in but just checking it you know the whole purpose of that is to stop any sparks from coming out you know so you don't start a grass fire or something if you're got this thing parked by anything that's remotely flammable you know, similar to not throwing cigarettes out your window when you're driving. <laughs> People think that's not a thing, but I'll tell you what. I've lived some places, spent time in places where it is absolutely a thing. Some dry parts of the country. All right, so putting that back in. We've pretty much done anything we need to do there. Then we'll go around and uh, check out the air filter. On the other end here now, the uh, side where your pulse start is. Just pop this. Another one on the bottom. It's got a gasket in there that's just being a little sticky. So that's pretty clean. You know, some of these fuzzies from the cottonwood trees that blow around in the summer make it look like it's snowing out. There's definitely some on here as well. But that's about it. It doesn't look bad. This one inside looks immaculate. You know, and then check inside there as well, just to make sure. I mean, I don't even see really any sign of dust at all. So you can all, you can replace that, or you can clean it. Warm water and soap, they say. You know, clean it and squeeze it out a bunch of times and until you no longer have any suds coming out of it. And then some people like to spray a little bit of oil or something on there to help things that might be small enough to get through dust-wise and stuff. And it's got something to stick to, and that oil can be sticky. This one I don't believe is oiled, and I don't recall seeing that in the notes. But check your manual, of course, and do whatever you're comfortable with regarding that. But this one, I'm just going to kind of get these, these fuzzies off here and put it back. I'll clean it a little bit more once we, uh, when I'm all done with that, but I'm just demonstrating for you at this point. Put these latches back on there. It's kind of an unusual design. All good. Let's see here. Now we'll, we'll come around to the spark plug. All right, so right around the corner from your air filter is your spark plug. I've already got my wire removed. And I'm using a 13 16 spark plug wrench or socket. And it doesn't really like that extension on there. Maybe once we get this on. And I'm usually, I usually use NGK for just about everything, small engine wise in particular. This had a Torch F7 RTC in it, so I'm going with, with uh, if I can get what they used from the factory to put in there, I will. And then if I can find a compatible down the road, I will, but it's pretty tight fit. Come on. I saw, there we go. There it is. Get that out of there. You know, I think I have just a little over a hundred hours on this generator and you know it's, it was I was considering doing it and I thought well I'll use it a little bit more it's end of season and we'll just do it all in one shot. And once I get this plug changed, then I'll add oil and I'm going to clean that, that crankcase oil fil filter 
out as well. I'm going to spray with parts cleaner and let it air dry because I don't have a compressor here where I'm at at the moment. It's kind of tight in here. I've certainly been in more challenging spark plug scenarios, but I keep thinking I'm about there and there we go. So that plug's not awful. It's got some car carbon buildup on it, but tell you what, it's cheap, cheap insurance, easy thing to do. I'm a big believer in it. I have a, the Honda generator, which I've done a video on that one as well. In that one, when it gets around 100 hours, it gets pretty finicky. And there was a time, one time that really made me a believer where it just kind of died and then it wouldn't run anymore. Couldn't get its fire up again. I put a new plug in it and the thing ran like it was new again. So that's all I, I needed to be convinced. So I change them every year. You know, I mean, unless I use the thing minimally or not at all, which is pretty rare. I use my generators quite a bit. And as you can tell, I have these three. I have one on a motorhome. That one needs a different kind of attention, but it's another story. So tighten this. You kind of get it about hand tight. You know, it's, it's still spinning. I just couldn't get my fingers in there to do it very well. You'll feel it kind of all of a sudden seat. Not quite yet. You want to make sure you're not cross-threading it. And I can still turn it pretty good, you know, by hand. Just double checking. This this one felt a little little tight getting out to begin with, so I just want to make sure that I'm I'm good there. But again, you want to go till you you'll feel it all of a sudden, you know, hit the shoulder of the uh, of the you know the hole. Once you feel it hit, just kind of. Give it about, it says like three eighths to a half turn. That's still not quite, there it is. Now it's there. I'm only gonna give it about a quarter because I can feel it getting tighter than I'm typically comfortable with from feel. So a couple reasons you don't wanna over tighten it. One, you don't wanna break the plug, crack it or something. And you probably sometimes won't even know that until you try to fire it up and it's running like crap. And two, you certainly don't wanna strip out those threads in there because that's, you know, a pretty involved repair job that you may or may not feel comfortable doing yourself and it's it's avoidable so avoid it so we'll go back around and deal with the oil and the, the filter oh I'm not gonna put this back on yet I will when I'm all done before we fire it up so the manual says clean with compressed or aerosol carburetor or brake cleaner and let air dry or use a compressor I'm gonna let it air dry as we discussed so I'm just gonna spray it with this and and I'll wipe it off. And I just have some carburetor cleaner here. Should probably be wearing a glove, so I'm spraying away from my hands. And I can see there's some gunk in there. So I, I may have to go and uh, take it to some compressed air to blow it out a little better. Not real impressed with... Sorry if it's out of focus. I don't know if you can see some of the gunk in there. Like there's a little piece of crud and... So I'm going to see if I can get, if nothing else, I probably have a can of compressed air I might be able to blast it with. We'll see. All right, so I held it down like this and really blasted it going around, you know, each side and letting it drain out as I was flooding it with cleaner. And all the gunk is on the inside, so I'm blasting it from the outside and it's running to the outside or running in and out, out the bottom. So I think that's good enough. I'm going to let it air dry and then I'll put it back in. So before I put the plug back in I decided to tilt it up a little bit and I put some blocks of wood under the far side to, you know to, to tilt it forward or towards the oil pan drain pan just get out a little bit more and you can see more is coming out because I'd wiped everything off a little bit and I thought well let's tilt it real quick before we refill all right so I think that's about as drained as it's gonna get I've cleaned off my oil plug I've cleaned off the uh, filter and the refill cap so I'll put this drain plug back in first. And just kind of snug that. Good enough for me. This has been sitting in air drying for quite a while. Looks wet, but it's just shiny. It's pretty dang dry. There's nothing going on there. So make sure we put that in the right 
hole there. And just snug that. There's an O-ring on there. Of course, you know, you want to make sure that's not damaged or anything or going down on the threads and it'll get kind of sandwiched in there as you tighten things up. And of course, after you fill, you know, you're going to make check everything for leaks here and here. And Okay, the manual indicates a few different recommendations for oil regarding, the, uh, depending on the temperature range in which you're operating it in. 5W30 is covers all of that spectrum, you know, at least any temperatures most of us are going to encounter. And I'm in Alaska, so it can be from very cold to pretty warm in the summer. I think it's like something below zero to like 100 degrees or something. So I just go with that. I figure if it's offering better protection under a wide spectrum of temperatures, it's, it's offering better protection across the board, you know, so why not just use that all the time? So that's what I'm doing. And I, I generally use uh, full synthetic oil. So this, when I bought this, it came, like I said, with that funnel and a, a quart of break-in oil and it, I don't have a measuring cup, but I know this cup, I believe, is is 18 ounces. So I'm going to pour one, almost two of these in there, and then we'll see where we're at. See how that, how that fills up, hopefully right about to the bottom of the threads. And I left the pan underneath there just in case it overflows out the, the fill spout there. You know, sometimes you get like a little little blowback or a little burp, but it seems to be t uh, going in pretty good. So I'll do almost two of these. I, I was about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch shy of this being full. And I'll do that again, and then I'll check the level in there with my dipstick. And then I'll run it for a while and check it again. There, I must, I must be there because I do see some dripping out there. I may actually be over. Yeah, it's like right there. That might be just right. I was going to leave the funnel in there to allow it to drain itself in. But I think we're probably right about where we need to be. You know, I don't know well, how well you can see into that hole there, but... Let's see if we can zoom in there for you. You can see it's like right at the threads. Yeah, I don't know how well it's represented there, but it's right right at the bottom of the threads. It could probably use a little bit more, but we'll put the dipstick in and see. I'm, I don't know that I'm at the optimal uh, level surface here either, so I'll have to get it back down on the ground. I don't know if you noticed I have this up on a picnic table. So it's it's about right there. And it up here is where it should be hot. So we'll run it a little bit. I'll get it down off this picnic table. I have some ramps if you're wondering how that happened. And I'll run it and I'll make sure it's on more level ground and check it. You'll hear the fuel pump do its job and then... Check the oil and we'll see where we're at. All right, so ran it a little bit, checked the oil level again, and it was a little bit low, so I added, I don't know, another ounce or so. I would imagine after refilling up that crankcase oil filter chamber and you know other other parts of the, the oil system, it needed to be topped off. But we're good now. I've got it about in the middle of the dipstick, and because on the high end it says that's the level when it's hot. I have not checked it when it's hot yet, but I certainly will after the next time I use it, which will be shortly here. I did throw a level on top just to uh, make sure we were on a level surface, you know, side to side and front to back. Make sure that I wasn't checking it at an angle, giving me erroneous readings. But that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. I gotta get this thing off the table now. If everything goes well with that, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.